When you start up Cakewalk for the first time, you're going to be brought to the Cakewalk Start screen. By default, it's set to the Recent Projects tab, which will show you the current projects you're working on or those that you've worked on in the past. You can load them straight from this tab, or you can go into Existing Project and search for ones that you've done maybe at a later date. Also, you can click on New Project, and you can actually upload any number of built-in presets and templates that will help to get you started quickly. You can also make your own templates, which is very useful. If I was to click on the Pro Startup, which is a template that I've created in Cell, it will load up a project that looks just like this. This is a template that I've created because nearly all of my songs at least have these elements. Vocals, guitar, electric, and guitar acoustic, bass guitar, and then drums, and then I have also a synth down here that I love, the Expand. And for my drums, I'll be using the Addictive Drums, which comes built in with Cakewalk. By using this startup template, I've already got all of the tracks that I would normally use in a project anyway. And they're also color-coded. They have icons built in so that you know exactly what you're working with if you go into your console view, for instance. As you can see, here's all of the icons. They're color-coded. And there's already built-in plugins that are up and available to use. So basically, by using this template, I can get started very quickly and not have to worry about a lot of the minutia. Also on the Pro Startup template, I've got built into each one of these channel strips here. If I was to go to Lead Vocals, I can click on Track here. And then I've got in the Description section a list of sort of good startup points for my EQ and then also some pro tips. For instance, on the bass guitar, here's my EQ start points. The bottom is found 60 to 80 hertz. The muddiness is in the 500 hertz region. This is just, like I said, good starting points. And then in the pro tips, apply a brick wall limiter to achieve a smooth and consistent low end. Saturation slash distortion is a great way to get your bass to cut through a dense mix. So it's like quick little tips that you can kind of use to get a better sounding mix in a lot shorter time. Okay, so this has been just a real quick glimpse and overview of what it's going to look like when you get started and the templates option.